Legendary Passages, Episode 30, The Herculean Zodiac. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and Leo for my Genus Astronomica. This is the sixth and final episode reviewing the early adventures of Hercules. Next will be his adventures with the Argonauts, which brings us to our first constellation. The ram, or Ares, carried Phrixus to King Aetes and gave the king its golden fleece, the objective of the Argonauts. The second constellation is the bull, or Taurus, that carried off Europa, mother of Minos. Nearby star clusters are the Hyades and the Pleiades. The third constellation is the Twins, or Gemini, known as Castor and Pollux. The fourth constellation is the Crab, or Cancer, the same one that Hercules encounters when he was fighting the Lernian Hydra. Lastly is the constellation called the Lion, or Leo, representing the Nemean Lion. The Herculean Zodiac, a legendary passage, from Hygienus Astronomica, translated by Mary Grant. The Ram This is thought to be the ram which carried Phrixus and Hella through the Hellespont. Hesiod and Pherecydes say that it had a fleece of gold. About this we shall speak at greater length elsewhere. Many have said that Hella fell into the Hellespont, was embraced by Neptune, and bore Paeon or as some say, Adonis. They say, too, that Phrixus, on coming safely to Aetes, sacrificed the ram to Jove, and hung the fleece up in the temple. The image of the ram itself, put among the constellation by Nubes, marks the time of year when grain is sown, because Eno earlier sowed it parched, the chief reason for the flight. Eratosthenes says that the ram itself removed its golden fleece, and gave it to Phrixus as a memorial, and then came of its own accord to the stars. For this reason, it seems somewhat dim, as we have said before. Phrixus was born, some say, in the town of Orcumenos, which is in Boeotia. Others say, in the district of Salonis of Thessaly. Still others make Cretheus and Athamas, with many others, sons of Aeolus. Some again say that Salmonius, son of Athamas, was a grandson of Aeolus. Cretheus had Demodice as wife, Others name her Beadisi. Moved by the beauty of Phrixus, son of Athamas, she fell in love with him, and could not obtain from him favor in return. So, driven by necessity, she accused him to Cretheus, saying that he had attacked her, and many similar things that women say. Stirred by this report, Cretheus, as was fitting for one who deeply loved his wife and was a king, persuaded Athamas to put Phrixus to death. However, Nubes intervened, and rescuing Phrixus and Hela, his sister, put them on the ram and bade them flee as far as they could through the Hellespont. Hela fell off and paid the debt to nature, and the Hellespont was named from her name. Phrixus came to the Colchians, and, as we have said, hung up the fleece of the slain ram in a temple. He himself was brought back to Athamas by Mercury, who proved to his father that, relying on innocence, he had fled. Hermippus says that at the time when Liber was attacking Africa, he came with his army to the place called Amodes from the great quantities of sand. He was in great danger, since he saw he had to advance, and an added difficulty was the great scarcity of water. The army were almost on the point of exhaustion, and the men were wondering what to do, when a certain ram, wandering apart, came by chance near the soldiers. When it saw them, it took safety in flight. The soldiers, however, who had seen it, though they were advancing with difficulty, pressed by sand and heat, gave chase, as if seeking booty from the flames, and followed it to that place which was named from the temple of Jove, Haman, later founded there. When they had come there, the ram which they had followed was nowhere to be seen, but what was more to be desired, they found an abundant supply of water, and, refreshed in body, reported it at once to Liber. In joy he led his army to that place, and founded a temple to Jove, Amon, fashioning a statue there with the horns of a ram. He put the ram among the constellations in such a way that when the sun should be in that sign, all growing things would be refreshed. This happens in the spring for the reason that the ram's flight refreshed the army of Liber. He wished it, too, to be chief of the twelve signs, because the ram had been the best leader of his army. But Leon, 
who wrote about Egyptian affairs, speaks of the statue of Haman as follows. When Libra was ruling over Egypt and other lands, and was said to have introduced all arts to mankind, a certain Haman came from Africa and brought to him a great flock of sheep, in order more readily to enjoy his favor and be called the first inventor of something. And so, for his kindness, Libra is thought to have given him the land opposite Egyptian Thebes. Accordingly, those who make statues of Amon make them with horned heads, so that men may remember that he first showed the use of flocks. Those, however, who have wished to assign the gift to Libra, as not asked for from Amon, but brought him voluntarily, make those horned images for Libra, and say that in commemoration the ram was placed among the constellations. The Bull the bull was placed among the stars because it carried Europa safely to Crete, as Euripides says. Some say that when Io was transformed into a heifer, Jupiter, to seem to make amends, put an image among the constellations which resembled a bull in its foreparts, but was dim behind. It faces towards the east, and the stars which outline the face are called the Hyades. These, Pherecydes, the Athenian says, are the nurses of Libra, seven in number, who earlier were a nymph called Dodonidae. Their names are as follows, Ambrosia, Eudora, Pedial, Coronis, Polyzo, Phyto, and Thion. They are said to have been put to flight by Lycurgus, and all except Ambrosia took refuge with Thetis, as Asclepides says. But according to Pherecydes, they brought Libra to Thebes and delivered him to Eno. And for this reason, Jove expressed his thanks by putting them among the constellations. The Pleiades are so named, according to Lausanius, because fifteen daughters were born to Atlas and Aethra, daughter of Ocean. Five of them are called Hyades, he shows, because their brother was Hyas, a youth dearly beloved by his sisters. When he was killed in a lion hunt, the five we have mentioned, given over to continual lamentation, were said to have perished. Because they grieved exceedingly at his death, they are called Hyades. The remaining ten brooded over the death of their sisters, and brought death on themselves, because so many experienced the same grief, they were called Pleiades. Alexander says they were called Hyades, because they were daughters of Hyas and Boeotia, Pleiades because born of Pleo, daughter of Ocean and Atlas. The Pleiades are called seven in number, but only six can be seen. The reason has been advanced, that of the seven, six mated with the mortals, three with Jove, two with Neptune, and one with Mars. The seventh was said to have been the wife of Sisyphus. From Electra and Jove, Dardanus was born. From Maya and Jove, Mercury. From Tegeti and Jove, Lacedaemon. From Alcyon and Neptune, Hyrius. From Calino and Neptune, Lycus and Nicetus. Mars by Asteropi begat Onomus, but others call her the wife of Onomus. Merope wed to Sisyphus bore Glaucus, who, as many say, was the father of Belopharon. On account of her other sisters, she was placed among the constellations, but because she had married a mortal, her star is dim. Others say Electra does not appear because the Pleiades are thought to lead the circling dance for the stars, but after Troy was captured and her descendants through Dardanus overthrown, moved by grief, she left them and took her place in the circle called Arctic. From this she appears in grief for such a time, with her hair unbound, that is, because of this, she is called a comet. But ancient astronomers place these Pleiades, daughters of Pleon and Atlas, as we have said, apart from the bull. When Pleon once was traveling through Boeotia with her daughters, Orion, who was accompanying her, tried to attack her. She escaped, but Orion sought her for seven years and couldn't find her. Jove, pitying the girls, pointed away to the stars, and later, by some astronomers, they were called the Bull's Tail. And so up to this time, Orion seems to be following them as they flee towards the west. Our writers call these stars Virgilii, because they rise after spring. They have still greater honor than the others, too, because their rising is a sign of summer, their setting of winter, a thing is not true of other constellations. The Twins these stars many astronomers have called Castor and Pollux. They say that of all brothers they were the most affectionate, not striving in rivalry for leadership, or acting without previous consultation. 
as a reward for their services of friendship. Jupiter is thought to have put them in the sky as well-known stars. Neptune, with the like intention, has rewarded them, for he gave them horses to ride, and power to aid shipwrecked men. Others have called them Hercules and Apollo, some even Triptolemus, whom we have mentioned before, and Iason, beloved of Ceres, both carried to the stars. Those who speak of Castor and Pollux add this information, that Castor was slain in the town of Aphidna at the time when the Lacedaemonians were fighting the Athenians. Others say that when Lysinus and Idas were attacking Sparta, he perished there. Homer states that Pollux granted his brother one half of his life, so they shine on alternate days. The Crab The crab is said to have been put among the stars by the favor of Juno, because, when Hercules had stood firm against the Lernian Hydra, it snapped at his foot from the swamp. Hercules, enraged at this, had killed it, and Juno put it among the constellations to be one of the twelve signs which are bound together by the circlet of the sun. As one part of its figure, there are certain stars, called asses, placed on the shell of the crab by Liber with two stars only. For Liber, when madness was set upon him by Juno, is said to have fled wildly through Hesperosha, intending to reach the oracle of Dodonian Jove to ask how he might recover his former sanity. When he came to a certain large swamp which he couldn't cross, it is said two asses met him. He caught one of them, and in this way was carried across, not touching the water at all. So when he came to the temple of Dodonian Jove, freed at once from his madness, he acknowledged his thanks to the asses and placed them among the constellations. Some say he gave a human voice to the ass which had carried him. This ass later had a contest with Priapus on a matter of physique, but was defeated and killed by him. Pitying him because of this, Liber numbered him among the stars, and so that it should be known that he did this as a god, not as a timid man fleeing from Juno, he placed him above the crab which had been added to the stars by her kindness. According to Erasthenes, another story is told about the asses. After Jupiter declared war on the giants, he summoned all the gods to combat them, and Father Liber, Vulcan, the satyrs, and Selenae came riding on asses. Since they were not far from the enemy, the asses were terrified, and individually let out a braying, such as the giants had never heard. At the noise, the enemy took hastily to flight, and were thus defeated. There is a story similar to this about the shell of Triton. He too, when he had hollowed out the trumpet he had invented, took it with him against the giants, and there blew strange sounds through the shell. The giants, fearing some wild beast had been brought by their adversaries, took to flight, were thus overcome by their enemy's power. The Lion He is said to have been put upon the stars because he is considered the king of the beasts. Some writers add that Hercules' first labor was with him and that he killed him unarmed. Cassandrus and many others have written about this. Above his likeness in the sky, nearest the Virgin, are seven other stars near his tail, arranged in a triangle, which Conan, the mathematician, and Callimachus call the Lock of Bernice. When Ptolemy married his sister Bernice, daughter of Ptolemy and Arsinoe, and after a few days had set out to attack Asia, Bernice vowed that if Ptolemy returned as victor, she would clip off her hair. She placed the lock, consecrated by this vow, in the temple of Venus Arsinoe Zephritis, but on the following day it couldn't be seen there. When the king was distressed by this, Conan the mathematician, whom we mentioned above, desiring to win the favor of the king, said that he had seen the lock among the constellations, and pointed out seven stars, without definite configuration, which he imagined were the lock. Some authors, along with Callimachus, have said that this Bernice raised horses, and used to send them to Olympia. Others add that once Ptolemy, Bernice's father, in a panic at the number of the enemy, had sought safety in flight, but his daughter, an accomplished horsewoman, leapt on a horse, organized the remaining troops, killed many of the enemy, put the rest to flight. For this even Callimachus calls her high-souled. Eratosthenes says that she ordered return to the girls of Lesbos the dowry left to them by their parents, which on one hand had released, and she established among them right to bring action of recovery.